Today I'm so excited because I will bring you along as I prepare my first Shabbat challah after Passover which is called a Schlüssel challah. It is a challah shaped as a key. It is a segula to increase our wealth as the key to our parnasa or livelihood is in God's hands and we pray while making this Schlüssel challah that God will shower us with abundance. I will show you four different techniques to make Schlüssel challah as well as how to decorate them. These Schlüssel challah are simple, full proof and make the complete process so fun and stressless because who needs complicated nowadays? If you're new here, hi, my name is Sarah Malka. On my channel, I share all my tips and tricks to keep a balanced life between being a Sephardic Orthodox Jewish mom working full time with small kiddos. So do not forget to leave a big thumbs up to the video and subscribe to our channel. Let me put on a pretty tehol and let's jump into it. My schlüssel challah starts by using the best challah recipe. The one I use is foolproof and absolutely delicious. I will leave the link above and in the description box below. Once we have the best challah recipe, I want to make the most beautiful strands. To achieve that, I will start by weighing each piece of dough. Then I will roll out each ball with a rolling pin to make sure all the air bubbles are removed and for the strand to avoid cracking and stay nice and smooth during the baking time. Then I'm going to roll it out onto itself to form a cigar. Pinch the edges from one side to the other. Then I will roll it slightly with my hands and put the strand aside. If I don't have a rolling pin, I will flatten my dough with my fingers. Then I will roll it tightly onto itself to form a cigar. Once again, I pinch the seam from one end to the other and then roll it slightly. Now that I have the smoothest strand, I can start my first schlüssel challah. I will start by simply braiding a three-strand challah, leaving the top unbraided. I make sure that the end is nicely tucked. Then I go back to the first extremity and I will roll them out to reach about 12 inches. Once that I have done that, I will roll the strand onto itself to form a swirl. I repeat, of course, the process with the three prongs and I make sure that they go in the same direction. I will take two pieces of dough and swirl them one onto the other. I will place my swirl under my challah to create the teeth of my key. I will put it on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, cover it, and then I will move on to my next chisel challah. The next one is one of the easiest. I roll out my dough to about 12 to 14 inches and I make knots making sure I tuck the ends at the bottom of my knot for it to fluff up and to keep its shape during the proofing and baking time. I place them on a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper. I form a circle making sure I leave a space between the pieces of challah to let the schlüssel challah proof correctly. I add the other pieces to form the body of the challah key. Then I will add the teeth of my challah using about a 10 gram piece of dough that I shape in a rectangular form. I keep a good distance between the ridges of my key for them to stay separated even after baking. I will put the teeth of my key challah under the dough to allow it to stick to the challah during its rising and baking time. I will cover my challah with a plastic sheet and go to my next chisel challah. I prepare three regular strands of dough and I do a smaller one that I will swirl onto itself, then I will put it aside. I will braid my challah with three strands all the way to the bottom and I will make sure to really nicely tuck the ends of the challah at the bottom. I will leave the top part unbraided like our first braided schlüssel challah. I will take the middle strand and I will roll it around the swirl. Then I will roll out the two other strands to elegate them and I will roll them around the first world I had created. I should have placed everything on a parchment paper but I completely forgot that I will do that in a minute. I will take small pieces of dough, about 10 grams each, and I will roll it onto itself. I place it around the head of my challah and I repeat the process until I have five circles. For them to keep their shapes, I will use wet parchment paper and I will place them in the circles. 
Then I add the decorations. Today I will keep it pretty simple. I will add a strand of dough and shape it like an S. I repeat the same thing on the other side and add a dot of dough. I make the teeth of the key using a piece of dough once again and I shape it like a little rectangle and I will place the rectangle under the challah to make sure while it's proofing it will stick to the body of the key. This is the key that inspired me. It is a key that my grandmother gave me. What do you think? Is it a pretty good replica? Let me know in the comments below. I will cover my challah, set it aside and I will go to the next Shabbat challah key. The last one is very special and dear to me because it is the first shape I made when I made my first shesel chala. I take a ball of dough and then I take a small string of dough and create a circle. Then I add another little string of dough and I put it straight underneath the circle. I cut two very small pieces of dough and I will connect it to the line. I add another line of dough on top to unify the design and then I will add two other layers of dough around the head of my key to give it a bit of dimension including one that will again make a circle all around the head of my key. I pat everything into place to make sure it sticks nicely to the dough. Then I will cover everything and let my challah proof for about 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, I will add the egg wash. Here I'm using only egg yolks to have a deep and rich color. I will put in the description box below my five favorite ways to make different egg wash, including a vegan egg wash to have the exact color I want when I make my challah. While I'm applying the egg wash, I make sure to put it in every nooks and cranny of the schlissel challah to give an even color. On the notch lesochala, I will add a mixture of za'atar and sumac to create different colors and textures. To make the spices stick to the chala, I will wet my finger and dip it in the pot of spice, then dab it on my chala. I will do a few layers of the spices on my chala to achieve the color that I want. In this particular shisel chala, I alternated the colors on the top of my chala to create more dimension but I left the bottom of my chala plain with only egg wash. To decorate my swirl schlissel chala, I will add some black sesame seeds because I could not find our white sesame seeds after Passover. Using the same technique, I apply the sesame seeds. Our sages say that we add sesame seeds to our schlissel chala to remind us that God fed us in the desert for 40 years with the manna that resembled white sesame seeds. For my grandmother's ki chala, I have opted to only decorate the loops with za'atar and sumac, and I will place my four chala in the oven for 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, I am left with simple, beautiful, and delicious schlissel chala. I would love to know which one was your favorite one, and also which one do you think you would attempt? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for being here. It means the world to me. Know that in my book, you are irreplaceable. And if you're here until the end, please write in the comments. I love Schlissel Chala. So I know I was not alone. If nobody told you today, know that you are loved and you are enough just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed. And don't forget to from it up.